We're here with Chase Briscoe, who I guess it looks like you're in your car. So uh, where, where are you going, man? Uh, well, my wife and I are going to eat, and we came to the mall. And so she's in Belk, I think, right now, buying something. And I'm just waiting out here until we go to eat. I like it. I like it. What, what's, what's a good lunch for a day like today? Well, we found we had some old Cheesecake Factory gift cards sitting around, so it's here at the mall, so we're just going to go there. They're like, there you can at least get a little bit of everything, so we're going to use those gift cards finally. Exactly. That menu's like a long book. It's perfect. Yeah. Something for everybody. <laughs> yeah, definitely something for everybody, that's for sure. Well, uh, it seems like you're a busy guy running around getting lunch. Even on off weeks for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, you're out racing in IMSA at Road America. Is Road America as hard as it looks? Because I've seen some onboard shots. Is it is it a tough racetrack? Yeah, it's it's a really long racetrack. You know, I think our lap times are right around two minutes and 20 seconds. So it's a really long lap. There's a lot of opportunities to make mistakes there. Um, and really, as a road course goes, I feel like it's one of the, the better road courses just because it has a little bit of everything. It has really long straightaways, uh, heavy braking zones, tight corners sweeping corners fast corners slow corners it's got a lot of elevation it's it's really got a little bit of everything um and it puts on always i feel like a, a really good race every time i go there in the xfinity series just with the tire fall off that we have there with how big the racetrack is it, it just is a really fun race to run um and plus the, the place is absolutely beautiful it's one of the best facilities i think we really have in all of the sport it's, it's almost like you're at a state park when you're there it's just so nice yeah, exactly. You feel like you're walking through a forest preserve when you're walking in the middle of Road America. Is it hard to get in a rhythm with such long lap times at that place? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I think, you know, the biggest thing there, at least in the, in the NASCAR stuff, is the tires fall off so much that, you know, every single lap you have to keep backing your corner up more and more and you have less and less grip where, you know, in the sports car stuff in IMSA this past week, it, it wasn't as bad as the tire fall off goes. So, you know, I think, some of that might probably hurt me going into this week, just the braking zones being quite a bit different. Um, you know, for example, into turn five in the IMSA car, we're like the 275 foot mark away from the corner and the Xfinity stuff, we're at the 575. So it's, you know, 300 feet different of braking. So it's going to be quite a bit different, I think, in the Xfinity car. But, you know, just getting to see the racetrack this past week, I feel like will certainly help. Yeah, you got to take a slow lap one, make sure you're in the right car, and then <laughs> go from there. Uh, but the IMSA cars, I've been learning more about how they can compare to a stock car. Obviously, you mentioned the braking points are different, but how much can you take away? Because I know you like to race those a fair amount and, and race some different cars outside of the NASCAR Xfinity Series. How much can you carry over with the feel of the racetrack and, and, and just – or the car's way too different? Yeah, I mean, the cars definitely drive different, but I think just getting seat time on a road course and learning, you know, how to, you know, maneuver the car left to right and really make up time, you know, no matter, it seems like what car you're driving on the road course stuff, you know, maximizing the braking zones, doing all those things uh, is really where your lap time's made. And, you know, I would say that the cars drive totally separate and don't really help the NASCAR stuff. But at the same time, if it wasn't for all the sports car racing I did in 2018, I feel like I would have been way off on the NASCAR side. So they definitely help, I think, to seeing these racetracks getting laps there. Um, then, like I said, just learning the technique of what it takes to go fast on these road courses and how to make passes and whatnot um, is certainly a, a big help. I heard you were racing at Road America to get some seat time because obviously we don't have practice now uh, for the rest of the season. And sometimes people forget how much NASCAR truly is a team sport. You need a good driver, but you need a solid team guys back in the shop at the racetrack to really put it all together you guys have put it together what does that say about you guys and your team this year yeah I mean it definitely is a, a team effort for sure and you know especially with no practice now you know the team guys are even more crucial than they were before because we have to hit it right at the shop instead of at the racetrack where you know when we had practice if you screwed it up at the shop you at least had an opportunity to make it back where now you don't have that opportunity so the, the shop guys are super crucial and then every little detail has to be perfect now because we don't have practice to say, okay, everything mechanical is going to work right here because if you have an issue now in the race, obviously your race is over. So it's even more crucial now, I think, than ever. But, yeah, our team has been really good. You know, I feel like we've really capitalized on the no practice stuff for the most part, except for these last two or three weeks. We've just kind of missed it for whatever reason. But up to that point, I feel like we've been one of the best cars. And, you know, it's just a testament of how good of a race car that, you know, they give me week in and week out. That's, that's one thing that 
this pavement racing is, is kind of really opened my eyes up is you're only as good as the car that you're in. And, you know, they've been really good about giving me some of the best cars week in and week out. I've heard you say in some previous interviews that you don't really get worked up in the race car. You're able to stay calm. First of all, how do you do that? Because I feel like my heart rate would be through the roof. And do you feel like that is an advantage to be able to stay cool, calm, and collect in these races? Yeah, I don't know why I'm like that. I think <laughs> personality-wise, I'm pretty laid back. I don't ever get mad. I just kind of stay relaxed all the time. And uh, I think that definitely helps in the race car. I feel like, you know, I just don't let my emotions get the best just because I don't typically get worked up. You know, I can get wrecked. And at the same time, I mean, obviously I'm upset, but I try to not let it affect what's going on. And, you know, it's even interesting. I just got a heart rate monitor this past week and wore it for the first time at the IMSA race. And, you know, I've seen other guys' heart rates in the 180s and, and 170 area. Mine was 135 of a max. Like, I just don't get worked up in, in the race car for whatever reason. So, uh, I don't know why that is. Um, but it is interesting. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, I'm curious to see on the NASCAR side if my heart rate's any higher than the sports car stuff. Um, but, yeah, it, it definitely I feel like a, a, a help to me, you know, in late race situations when there's a lot of pressure. Um, just not letting get worked up and, and let that adrenaline start pumping. And, you know, normally when you're like that, you start making mistakes. And, you know, this year we've been in a lot of high-pressure situations and been able to come out on top. Do you remember the last time you did get worked up in a race car? No, I was <laughs> – I don't know. I was pretty fired up last week. Not fired up. I was frustrated at Kansas just because our car was way off. But, you know, a lot of guys get upset when guys are racing you hard. And I just don't – that's what we're there to do. We're – getting paid to be hard to pass in a sense so yeah I don't I don't get too worked up I don't think I've ever yelled on the radio or any of that stuff I, I'm normally pretty relaxed I'm probably the most boring guy to listen to on the radio <laughs> yeah your crew chief must love you because you never has to calm you down or anything it's got to be perfect pretty opposite he, he'll even tell you he's <laughs> the one that's always worked up and, and getting fired up and then I'd normally have to try to calm him down <laughs> you have to calm him down from inside the car yeah Oh my God. That's funny. Um, I, I wanted to quickly go to a tweet you sent out about a, you posted an old picture of a kind of trailer slash bus that you and your family used to use. Was it made like that or did you guys make it to transport uh, little sprint cars? Yeah. So um, where I'm from Mitchell, there used to be this company called Carpenter bus and this guy that drove for my grandpa worked at the bus place. And so this bus was a carpenter bus that was built in Mitchell, Indiana. And, and they just decided that I guess they were going to turn it into a trailer. I don't really know the full story. All I know is everybody always talks about, man, we remember when, you know, your grandpa was traveling to the races in that bus just because it was so odd to see this bus that was cut in half essentially with the race car hanging out the back. So we've been trying to find out where it's at. We think it's in Florida. Um, we want to try to find it and restore it hopefully. So, I don't know. I don't think it's probably going to be in the best condition if we do find it, but it would be cool to kind of restore it. You know, I don't even know if we're going to necessarily try to make a drive. I just want to paint it like it used to be with the, the Briscoe 5 Sprinter on the side. And it'd be cool to see my grandpa's reaction to see it. You know, I think that was late 70s when he had it, early 80s. So it'd be cool to, to go back and see it. That would be cool. Are you going to surprise him? Does he know about this? Uh, no, he doesn't really know about it, but me and my dad have been talking and we want to try to find it first off, just see even what condition it's in. And, you know, we got to figure out how to even the guy that apparently we had sold it to, he says it's in Florida. So I don't know what the next step is in trying to find out where this thing is, but supposedly it's in Florida. Well, hopefully he's not on Twitter. Cause when I tweet this video, yeah, he's, surprised he's me not on Twitter. <laughs> perfect, even better. <laughs> uh, but racing obviously runs in the family. I heard your little sister, you said, was given a shot at racing some cars uh, at the weekend after Indianapolis. So did, how, how'd that go? Yeah, so the day we actually won Indianapolis, that night I went over to Putnamville, um, and she decided she wants to try I don't know what got in her mind, because typically she doesn't really, at least growing up, she didn't like, she liked going to the races, but she would never want to sit in the car if it was running or anything like that. And she's more mechanical than I am. Um, you know, she enjoys like working on them where I'm the complete opposite. So she wanted to try driving it. And, uh, so we have a friend that I used to drive for in the mini sprint stuff, Andy and Scott Bradley, and they were nice enough to take a car over to Puttonville. And after the night was over and the feature was over, they let her go out and drive. And she did way better than I ever thought she would. I thought that she would be 
uh, kind of caution speed and, and pretty slow. And she was standing on the gas. I was kind of getting a little nervous a couple of times. I think she got down to like a 15 or 16 second lap time, which was pretty respectable, I thought. So I don't know if she wants to race or not. Uh, I keep telling her that if I was her, I would just keep testing instead of racing because the racing takes a lot of the fun out of it. But uh, yeah, she enjoyed it. And like I said, she was way better than I ever thought she would have been at it. And those were her first laps. Yeah, she's never driven anything. I mean, wow. she's driven a golf cart, obviously, a couple times and stuff like that. And she has her license, but <laughs> never anything fast or, or, you know, anything that's a race car by any means. Um, she spun it out twice, but uh, it was because she didn't have power steering. Her arms were getting so tired that she couldn't keep up with it anymore. But, <laughs> yeah, she was on the rev limiter down the straightaway and everything. She was definitely on the gas. That is awesome. That is cool. Well, you're going to have to watch out if she ends up yeah, getting good. Yeah, Yeah, I know. <laughs> Start, I got some some pressure on me now. Yes, exactly. Uh, I want to finish off. I know that you've looked up to Tony Stewart your whole career, and I heard something interesting. You, just like him, eat Oreos before a race. You still do that? <laughs> uh, I mean, if they're laying around, I'll definitely grab one. <laughs> I, I don't go out of my way to find an Oreo before the oh, race. Okay. But, but, uh, I mean, if, if they're sitting in the trailer or whatever, I'll definitely grab one or two of them. You know, I – I'm not the most fitness regimen guy there is and definitely not the, the healthy eater guy. But, yeah, if, if they're laying around, I mean, I'm not going to walk by a double stuffed Oreo and, and not eat one. So, normally, I'll, if they're in the trailer, I'll definitely grab one. I, it's not like I eat a whole sleeve of them or anything, but I'll, I'll eat one or two. I mean, you got to have a little bit of sugar, I guess, to help you go for the race. Exactly. I was going to say, so double stuff then? You're a double stuff guy? Yeah, if, yeah, if you're not buying yeah. double stuff, then you might as well not even buy them. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Well, Chase, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, go enjoy some cheesecake. Can you? Are you going to eat a cheesecake or are you going to? Nah, I've it? never had a cheesecake my entire life. To be honest with you, really I'm picky either. Yeah, I've never never tried a cheesecake. So I'll probably get some pasta if I had to guess. And then I'm not a big dessert guy in general. Even though we were just talking about Oreos, I don't, I don't, you know, crave ice cream yes, or any yeah. of that stuff. Yeah, I'm just not not a, not a huge sweets guy typically. So the chocolate thing is, has been trending more that way. It seems like I used to never even like chocolate. Now I, I kind of like it. So I've been eating more and more of it. Oh, cool, man. Well, go enjoy your lunch. Go enjoy the rest of the season. It was great catching up with you, Chase. Yeah, man. Thanks talk, th th Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you.